Welcome to Muscleworks. In this video, I show you something that you might haven't seen before on a Lego uh, track layout. It's a moving bascule bridge, which is fully automated and also integrated into the high level train automation. So uh, what's happening here? Let's have a look. Uh, that's uh, the bridge and uh, it's, it's not a perfect uh, piece of art in Lego design, of course. If you would do that, probably the bridge would probably be like two or three feet and have a cage, uh, would be a double track bridge and it also would have a counterweight and uh, many other things. Uh, this is just a technology demonstration here. So um, just uh, plain and simple. Uh, the point is the automatic uh, and the automation of the bridge, which I'm going to show you just in a minute. So let's have a look at the bridge. Um, some important design points are, uh, if you have a train bridge, then you need to be careful uh, where the turning point is. The turning point uh, here is a little bit above the surface of the track or it could be right at the level of the tracks. Be careful that you don't have the turning point too low because then when the bridge opens, the moving track, which is going up, is going to crank itself into the um, uh, track here uh, where the trains are uh, approaching the bridge. So turning point must be not too low, place it more or less on the level of the surface of the tracks. And the other important design point is on the other side when the bridge is closing uh, to make it find its way right in the position where it uh, goes on the other side of the approaching track. Um, you need to make sure that it's just um, feeding into that and has a steady position here. And uh, I've done that with some roof tiles uh, with a pretty steep angle here. So um, let's have a look at the bridge and how it's moving. I'll just click on Rockwell here and the bridge should be opening and it does. Here we've got the bridge motor and uh, a pretty strong suspension here. Uh, two gears which are positioned here just uh, behind the motor. Uh, one suspension or one gear would be or would have been sufficient as well but uh, if you have a high suspension, then uh, the, the, the opening and closing of the bridge looks uh, more realistic, of course, because the bascule bridge wouldn't open in, in two seconds, you know. Now the bridge is open, very nice. The opening position is actually determined with a reed sensor. A reed sensor here uh, is uh, the same as we are using uh, on the tracks to determine the position of the train. Uh, there is a video about that on the Matsubrex website, just uh, have a look at it uh, if you're interested in that. The read sensor is triggered with a small magnet here, which is in the Technic Lego bricks. And the same is on the other side, of course, as well. So when I close the bridge, the motor is going in the other direction and it will close until the root center is triggered by the other magnet here. And uh, there's one important point which I'd like to show you here. You see the yellow flashing light here. When the root center is triggered, it's going to flash a little bit quicker. And that means that the root center has been triggered, but the bridge isn't fully closed yet. So in the firmware, you can set a certain number of uh, seconds, uh, which the bridge motor continues to close the bridge until it's fully closed. So that is important as well. It's some extra time and you can also configure some extra time for opening the bridge. 
Not that important, of course, but for closing the bridge is very important. Nice. So then let's have a look how this is all working. Here is the controller housing and inside is, you will have guessed it already, a Matsu controller. This um, version of the Matsu controller is called the Matsu, uh, the Matsu bridge controller. And technically it's very similar to a Matsu layout controller. You probably have seen the video that I posted a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the Matsu layout controller is for controlling switches, signals, sensors, the level crossing as well. And it can also uh, control the Matsu bridge controller. That means the firmware, which you can download on the website, uh, is the same as we use for the Matsu layout controller. There is a configuration option that you can use it for a best your bridge. And from the wiring, the only difference is that it has a motor shield here um, attached in order to be able to control the bridge motor. Of course, you can also connect the second bridge motor if you have a vascular bridge with two moving sides on the ends. So, then there is a small lever here. Uh, it has no real meaning. You don't really need it, but uh, I, I like to have it for emergency reasons when the bridge is doing something that it shouldn't do. Uh, and um, that I can easily stop the bridge. Uh, of course, that has never happened before, yeah, you know. Okay, um, you have also seen the lights here. When I open the bridge, there is a white light that indicates that the bridge is opening. When the bridge is fully opened, the light for the boat is going to turn green. And when the bridge is going to close again, the light is going to turn red again automatically and instantly let's make that a little bit shorter and we have a yellow flashing light to indicate that the bridge is moving and unsafe and if you are a lego minifig you shouldn't be on the bridge at this time so that's basically it for the bridge and now Let's move some trains. We have two trains here on that small layout. First is a small uh, uh, regional express and the other one is the ice train. Uh, the layout is pretty simple and just for demonstration, of course, there's only one sensor per block, a uh, couple of signals and I even uh, uh, spared out the switch motors for the switches this time uh, because the trains are moving only in one direction, regional express this way, ice train the other way around. And with that one-way street logic, uh, I didn't uh, even need track motor. So let's give it a try. Which one is first? Let's go with the regional express. And auto mode on, and here we go. Beautiful. Train has crossed the bridge and uh, as you might have seen, there is a little gap between the tracks here. It wasn't a, prob it, uh, wasn't a problem for the uh, train. Um, it uh, rattled a little bit by the process without any significant problems. So, something else has just happened. The bridge which is set to automatically open every, I believe, 60 seconds here, uh, is opening and the train has automatically stopped. Um, that's not a coincidence, that is programmed into Rockrail, of course. From the logic, the bridge is nothing else than a switch. It's considered to be a switch in Rockrail. And that means that it can be a part of the route. The route that is defined here goes from that block, block two, to block one. It doesn't have any switches, but it has a bridge. So 
if the route is being set by Rockrail, the switch must be at the closed position. And have a look at this. And in Rockrail, the switch is already, uh, or the bridge is already in the closed position. It is closed, but as you can see here on the red box, the final position and the correct position of the bridge of being closed has not been confirmed yet. And that means that the train is not released over that route. We need to wait until the bridge is fully closed, which is happening now. And now the signal is turning green and the train is going. So the guy who programmed Orkoil really did a great job here and integrated all of that so we can use it for our Lego train layouts. Next train is coming, it's the ice train. Passing the bridge without a problem. Just to mention it, when a train is on the bridge, that means if a route is set and activated over the bridge here, the bridge is not able to open because it's like a um, switch component within a route. If that route has locked the switch, it cannot be switched or flipped to any other position. That means bridge cannot be uh, opened. Um, while the train is on the bridge. That also applies to manual mode. I couldn't open it at the moment, but in this case, the train hasn't been on that part of the track, so it can be still open and it does. Let's do this one more time. But I think you already got the basic idea of it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube and also make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to stay up to date uh, in terms of LEGO train layout. Uh, all the details, the wiring diagram and also the firmware for download is on the website matzobricks.com. Um, there is also a newsletter which you can subscribe to and we have a Facebook profile. So again, thank you very much for watching. I'll just leave the train uh, and the other train running a little bit. Uh, and uh, again, have a good day. And